An early review of Intel's latest i7-11700K Rocket Lake CPU was posted, and it looks like an absolute dumpster fire. This is worse than I expected. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Anontech just a couple days ago posted a full review of Intel's latest Core i7-11700K desktop processor well before the review embargo lift date. This is because, as I had explained in a previous video, Mine Factory, who are a very well-known computer parts store in Germany, have already started selling the new Rocket Lake i7 chip. So what they did was they simply just bought the chip through them just like how you or I could have and simply posted the review. I just thought that it was pretty funny to see that considering we have reviewers and other publications under an NDA while these distribution channels have already started rolling out the chips into the hands of consumers who can do their own tests and know how the chip performs before reviews even go up. So it's a pretty big blunder from Intel if you ask me. Anyways, this review was posted by Ian Cutris to their site and as usual he did a very thorough job with the review. I'll leave a link in the video description because I highly recommend giving it a read for yourself. Based on the information that was presented in this review, the Rocket Lake i7-11700K looks like an absolute joke. In some of my previous videos where I discussed the leaks and rumors surrounding Rocket Lake, it was looking like it wasn't going to be that much faster than the previous generation, along with the fact that this generation is only going to top out at 8 cores, which means it's going to look quite bad when compared to a previous generation 10900K or a Ryzen 9 5900X. Though I was a bit optimistic and said that perhaps at best Intel may regain their gaming crown due to the higher boost in single threaded performance. Turns out, I was wrong and this 11700K is quite a bit worse than I expected it to be. Some people went as far as to call this Intel's bulldozer and I can definitely see where they're coming from. Since this CPU underperforms and underdelivers not just in computing performance, gaming, but in other aspects like thermals and power. Now, I just wanted to make a note of the test bench that they're using, more specifically the graphics card which is an RTX 2080 Ti. Nothing wrong with that, but I'll explain later on in the video why I want to make you guys take note of that. The first section of their review focuses on thermals and power consumption, and the 11700K is an absolute furnace, which does concern me just how badly the 11900K will do considering that chip has been basically pushed to the limit of the silicon. So in a workload like POV Ray, the 11700K tops out at around 80 degrees Celsius and consumes about 220 watts of power. But when it came to a workload which utilizes AVX 512, then the 11700K just goes right out the window when it comes to thermals and power. I mean, it peaked at 290 watts when it came to the power usage, which is just obscenely high for, you know, not just speaking in terms of a processor, but this is the kind of power usage you see from higher core count CPUs, Threadrippers, but this is just a mere 8 core CPU and it's in high end GPU territory, which is, you know, just a joke. Obviously, under a gaming load, you won't see these kinds of figures, but sheesh, that backported architecture is taking full advantage of the 14 nanometer power envelope. In comparison to a previous gen CPU, it does consume a considerable amount of more power when compared to a 10700K, but is comparable to a 9900KS. Though all those CPUs look significantly bad when compared to a Ryzen 7 5800X. This 11700K is one power hungry and hot CPU, but you know, this was to be expected with the larger cores as this was a micro architecture originally set to release on 10 nanometers. When it comes to productivity or workstation benchmarks, the 11700K has its strengths and weaknesses. I'm not going to go over every single benchmark. As I said, you guys should take a look at the review for yourselves, but the 11700K does lose out to the competing 5800X and benchmarks like DigiCortex, Corona Renderer, V-Ray, and more, and does so by a significant margin. But I mean, given the power requirements we saw, this CPU really isn't all that efficient, and that's what makes it look like a huge joke. Not to mention, it's not really that much faster than a previous generation 10700K, so there's really nothing enticing going on here. When it comes to gaming performance, it actually gets worse. Take their World of Tanks benchmark, for example. At 1080p standard, the 11700K not only gets crushed by a 5800X, but actually loses to both the 10700K and a 9900KS. Final Fantasy XIV, which is an MMO, that are notoriously CPU bound titles by the way, which is why I like to see them included in CPU reviews, so I was happy to see that 
this title was included in their benchmark suite. But as you guys can see here, it's pretty much the same story. It's trilling the previous generation parts while being significantly behind the competing 5800X. Also, do you guys remember when I told you to take note of the GPU they used? They're using a 2080 Ti. Had they used a more faster GPU like a 3080 or 3090, then these gaps would have been even larger due to the bottleneck being more profound in the CPU. They have a lot more benchmarks they ran, but I'm sure you guys get the point by now. Oh, and just in case any of you guys might be thinking that perhaps they might be using an early engineering BIOS, Hardware Unboxed actually commented on the review, and they have been in contact with motherboard manufacturers who say they are working on some upcoming BIOS updates. However, they did state that those BIOS updates aren't really going to be bringing any sort of performance enhancements or aren't going to be impacting performance positively for the 11th generation processors. So it is what it is. The performance you guys are seeing here is what you're going to get. The 11700K is just, you know, absolutely pathetic of a CPU. And the fact that it is struggling to keep up with the 5800X means that the 11900K at best is going to be trading blows with the 5800X. You know, despite me even in the past saying that it's going to be DOA when it comes to multi-core performance, I thought that, you know, Rocky Lake would have at least had a meaningful impact when it comes to single core performance with Intel having these bold claims of a 19% IPC improvement, though this was more likely a figure they had attained from a specific workload probably using the AVX 512 instruction set, which was an emphasis with this generation. But why? Like, I can see this being a big deal for HEDT as that segment deals with many workloads which have to, you know, utilize that instruction set, but this is just a mainstream segment. Furthermore, I feel like this new architecture might be facing high latency issues which could be hampering on its overall performance. My biggest issue with Rocket Lake isn't even its performance, it's the fact that Intel feels so deluded that they think that someone will pay extra and buy a 11700K over a 5800X. Over at Mine Factory, there is a significant difference when it comes to the price between these two CPUs and the fact that Ryzen owners can opt to use a cheaper chipset motherboard, like B550 for example, makes that cost difference a lot more apparent. Oh, and you can probably forget about using a cost-effective cooler. I'd, I'd even be wary about using an NHD15 on this thing. You're going to probably have to spring for a high-quality 360 AIO or 280mm AIO at the very least, and those are not cheap by any means. This is going to be even more ridiculous and comical when you have reviewers comparing an 11900K to a 5900X or even a 10850K, which by the way, you can buy for around 350 USD because Intel felt the need to price the SKU in Ryzen 9 territory when it's really just going to be a bloodbath. Remember, the 11900K is an 8-core 16-thread processor, same as the 11700K, just with higher clock speeds which really won't make a huge impact when it comes to, you know, real world performance and will no way even let it compete with those higher core count CPUs that I just mentioned. So if you thought that the 11700K looked bad, just wait until you guys see reviews of the 11900K, which will probably at best maybe match a 5800X. To me, the whole 11 generation series of processors based on Rocket Lake look like a complete mess and just pointless. They're not going to be performing significantly faster than the previous generation 10 series while being just is expensive if not more than Ryzen 5000 which you know makes no sense to me. My advice just ignore the 11 series pretend they don't exist as there are much better options out there on the market. Like I said right now you can get a 10700k for around $280 or a 10850k for around $350. And, you know, that looks like an absolute fantastic deal when it comes to value. Alternatively, if you want the best performance, outstanding multi-core performance, and, you know, good efficiency than the Ryzen 5000 series or even the 3000 series like a 3900X in that regard perform excellent. I just don't see any reason to buy the 11 Gen CPU. Not when they don't really offer anything meaningful in terms of the performance category and are so overpriced. I know it may sound like I'm being a bit too harsh on Intel here, but you know, I, I really was rooting for them here as I'm a fan of market competition. And with AMD just pushing forward, firing on all cylinders, they'll be on track to release Zen 4 probably on 5 nanometers. And, you know, that thing will just run circles around Intel. Here's hoping they might be able to catch up with Alder Lake, but as it stands right now, this uphill battle just got a lot more steep. I just don't want to see one company gain a monopolistic stronghold on this market, as we've been through that nightmare before, and trust me, it's not fun. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.